In the 1930s, most Americans did not support the United States getting involved in foreign conflicts. Many people believed that America's participation in World War I was a mistake due to the consequences that followed. This feeling resulted in a strong opposition to war and an increase in the desire to isolate oneself from global matters, with many people supporting a policy of non-involvement in international affairs. Despite Japan's invasion of Manchuria, the United States chose not to intervene. The Neutrality Acts were approved by Congress. These acts made it illegal to provide loans or sell weapons to countries engaged in war, including those involved in civil conflicts such as the Spanish Civil War. Yet, in 1937, President Franklin D. Roosevelt discovered a method to circumvent the Neutrality Acts. He reasoned that since Japan had not formally declared war on China, he could offer military assistance to China without contravening the laws. He talked about isolating the countries that were being aggressive, but received criticism from people who believe in staying separate from other countries, which caused him to change his plans. Although Roosevelt made efforts to find a compromise, isolationism continued to have a major impact on American foreign policy at this time. The Neutrality Acts initially stopped the United States from joining the war in Europe. However, President Roosevelt suggested a modification to let Britain and France buy and transport American weapons through a cash and carry arrangement. The Neutrality Act of November 1939 was recently enacted. In 1940, Germany, Italy, and Japan joined forces and created a treaty for mutual defense, thus becoming known as the Axis Powers. This treaty ensured that if the United States engaged in war with any of these countries, all three would join the fight, resulting in America being at war on two fronts, in Europe and Asia. However, Roosevelt made the decision to assist Britain by offering them all possible aid, except for engaging in war, in order to help them combat Hitler. Roosevelt assured the nation that the United States would not get involved in war, but at the same time, he started getting ready for the possibility of conflict. In September 1940, Congress raised the amount of money spent on national defense and implemented the Selective Training and Service Act, which was the first draft during peacetime in the country's history. Roosevelt, in a departure from the usual practice of serving two terms, decided to run for re-election in 1940 and successfully secured a third term. Wendell Wilkie, his opponent, also believed in supporting Britain without directly getting involved in the war. Following the election, Roosevelt addressed the American people, sharing his belief that engaging in peace talks with Hitler would be unattainable. He cautioned that if Britain were to be defeated, there would be no remaining force capable of preventing the Axis powers from achieving global domination. Roosevelt suggested the Lend-Lease Act, which proposed lending or leasing weapons to any nation that was crucial for the defense of the United States. In March 1941, Congress passed the Lend-Lease Act, even though there were people who opposed it due to their belief in isolationism. When Germany invaded the Soviet Union, the United States provided Lend-Lease support to both the Soviets and Britain. American industries started making war supplies, employing more workers, and reducing unemployment, which signaled the conclusion of the Great Depression. During the escalation of World War II, Hitler's Nazi submarines, called U-boats, started attacking enemy supply ships in order to hinder the delivery of goods to Britain and the Soviet Union. The U-boat attacks were successful in sinking a large quantity of supplies. In June 1941, President Roosevelt told the U.S. Navy to keep Lend-Lease ships safe and allowed American warships to protect themselves by attacking German U-boats. Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill had a confidential meeting in August 1941. During this meeting, they signed an agreement known as the Atlantic Charter. While the United States had not officially declared war at this time, the Charter established the common objectives for engaging in World War II. The goals encompassed collective security, disarmament, safeguarding individuals' rights to determine their own government, promoting economic cooperation, and ensuring freedom of the seas. Afterwards, an additional 26 countries signed a comparable agreement, creating the Allies, a unified power opposing Germany, Italy, and Japan. On September 4, 1941, a German U-boat attacked an American destroyer. As a result, President Roosevelt commanded the U.S. Navy to engage German ships without hesitation. 
As a result, U-boats sank an American merchant ship and several other American vessels, causing the unfortunate loss of over 100 American seamen's lives. The Senate ultimately permitted the equipping of merchant ships as a large-scale conflict with Germany appeared more and more likely. The United States was getting closer to officially joining the war as part of the Allied effort. Japan had a strong desire to create a large empire and expand its territories for a long time. Japan had already started taking control of Asian territories that belonged to European colonies. Simultaneously, the United States possessed islands in the Pacific region. Tensions increased when Japan invaded Indochina in 1941. As a result, the United States stopped trading with Japan because Japan heavily relied on American oil for its military activities. Hideki Tojo, the Prime Minister of Japan, engaged in peace negotiations with the United States while simultaneously making preparations for war. At that time, the United States had successfully deciphered Japan's secret communications code and was aware of Japan's military preparations for an impending attack. However, they did not have precise details regarding when and where the attack would occur. Following failed peace talks and the revelation of a decoded message expressing Japan's rejection of American proposals, Japan launched an unexpected assault on the primary U.S. naval base located in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, on December 7, 1941. The U.S. Pacific Fleet was greatly harmed by this attack, resulting in the destruction of numerous ships and planes, as well as the loss of over 2,400 lives. President Roosevelt initially anticipated the United States' involvement in the European War, but not in Asia. However, after the terrible attack on Pearl Harbor, he quickly spoke to Congress on December 8, 1941, asking for a declaration of war against Japan. He called the attack an unexpected and cowardly act, which prompted Congress to swiftly approve a declaration of war. Germany and Italy, who were allied with Japan, also declared war on the United States in response, which led the nation to enter World War II on multiple fronts.